So I've played through the summer transfer window. We've made our moves happen. Uh, pretty much all of the money will be spent. So we'll not have a lot to play with going further down the line. But I'm more than happy with the squad that we've got for the rest of this season. And we get our first game in the Premier League against Brighton. So we'll start off on the finances screen. We've still got £41 million left in the budget. But don't let that fool you. We just haven't quite completed one of our transfers. So we'll get into the transfer activity that we have managed to complete. And we'll start with the out. Marcus Rojo left to join AC Milan for £11.25 million. He is a decent centre-half, but we've got so many decent centre-halves that I was more than happy for him to leave. Get his wages off the uh, wage bill and get that transfer fee in. Absolutely works for me. We've loaned out quite a few players as well. A lot of our youngsters who need some first-team football, which they weren't going to get from me. Lee Grant was... And I didn't even know he played for Manchester United. That's how random he is. 37 years old. Left to join uh, New York City in the MLS for 250,000 quid. I mean, just no point in keeping him. We also sold our third choice goalkeeper, Sergio Romero, to Real Madrid for 4.8 million quid. Again, I'm hoping that two keepers will be more than enough. If I have to call on someone from the youth team, I will do. I'm hoping that, that will not be the case. And the other major out was one matter. Happy to get his wages off the bill. He's went to join Zenit for 3.2 million, rising to 4.2 million quid. Again, that was mainly wages I was more orientated towards. He is still a decent player on Football Manager 2021. So if you can't get rid of him, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just his physicals that really let him down. And the amount of options we've got in this tackle midfield centre spot is ridiculous. So we didn't really need him. And that takes us to the ins. You've probably already looked at it, but the two that we've managed to get over the line so far are Luis Felipe from Lazio. I mentioned in the last episode, I really, really wanted a strong physical centre-half. Whilst you might look at that pace and think he's not too dissimilar to Victor Lindelof, he is a much more well-rounded centre-half. If we just compare the two here, uh, Lindelof's in blue, Luis Felipe is in green. Uh, he's got better vision, same speed, better physical, better defending, better mental, better aerial, weak, weaker technically. Um, but he is just a much, much better defender, particularly in the mental areas. Uh, that's a massive, massive uh, gap in Lindelof's game. And for a centre-half of this calibre, hopefully challenged towards in the top of the Premier League, we needed to get that improvement in. So for £27.5 million, quid, I thought that was a bit of a bargain. We're not paying that all up front either. I think we paid something like £15 million up front with... The rest coming in instalments. So that's how we've been able to stretch our budget as far as we have. Next to join was Rodrigo Bentoncourt from Juventus. I was very, very surprised he was even going to be an option for me. He is a world-class midfielder on this game. 45 million quid. He's exactly the sort of player I need playing in alongside Paul Pogba. And he's going to be phenomenal, I think. He's probably going to end up playing as a deep-lying playmaker in a defensive role. Allowing Pogba to be... A little bit more free in his centre midfield player and get the most out of his technical attributes, which he's particularly good in. But he's 45 million quid. I don't think you can complain for this sort of player. If this was a regen in 10 years' time, it will, you'd be creaming yourself at 80 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm more than happy to bring him in. Our centre midfield option is now a really, really strong area of the squad. And I'm very, very happy. And probably the final transfer that we're going to make for the summer transfer window is going to be Kingsley Corman. We're paying, well, 20 million up front, 32.5 million completed with installments, 105k per week. Uh, Jaden Sancho was the obvious choice to go there. They wanted something closer to 80 million for Jaden. And to be honest with you, I'm more than happy to bring in Kingsley Corman. He's got that electric pace that should hopefully be able to make him burst down that right hand side which he's mainly going to be playing. But of course, he can play on that left-hand side, should he be needed to. Um, him and Mason Greenwood are really going to be our two options on that right. He will be my first choice. Mason Greenwood will come on from him in many games, I would imagine. And I think he's going to be fantastic. 24 years old, a little bit of potential still to grow as well as the other two boys have at 23 years old each. And I, th I think we can be absolutely delighted with our summer transfer business. In terms of our system and how we are going to set out for probably the rest of the season, as long as it's actually working, it's going to be something like this. We're going to have the sweeper keeper on defend role for David De Gea. Juan Basaka and Alex Tellez as wingbacks on the fullback role. Lindelof and Maguire in the centre for Adir as Luis Felipe is still injured. But it will typically be Harry Maguire and Luis Felipe. As I mentioned in the centre of the park, Paul Pogba and Ben Unker 
can both play either role, to be honest with you. It doesn't really matter which one plays where. But I think I'd prefer Benton Kerr being the one who's sitting a bit deeper, holding his position and providing some cover for the defensive area, allowing Pogba as a box-to-box -box midfielder to be able to support the attack and uh, play when we're in the final third. And as you can see for Paul Pogba, minus his tackle and start and his position and start, he is just the ultimate box-to-box -box midfielder. You've always got to have someone with decent teamwork, really good physicals and well-rounded everywhere else. Uh, to get the most out of a box-to-box -box midfielder. At least in previous versions of FM anyway. We'll wait and see how that goes. We'll have a winger on the right-hand side, which today is going to be Mason Greenwood. Hopefully going forward, it will be Kingsley Corman. On the left-hand side, we've got Marcus Rashford. Anthony Martial can come into there as and when is needed. Probably most of the time, to be quite honest with you. Bruno Fernandes playing in behind Edison Cavani to start with. It's it's a real, real toss-up between Anthony Martial and Edison Cavani. I'm thinking... Edinson Cavani being more well-rounded might be better suited to games where we're a little bit more on the back foot and we need the striker to be involved more in the play. Uh, against Brighton today, I'm thinking Anthony Martial gets a start. We're probably going to be able to play plenty of through balls behind the defence and be able to open up Brighton that way. So Martial gets a start today, but Cavani might well end up being our main striker. In terms of manager performance, then happy with the financial aspect of signing Felipe Luiz. I do think that 27 million quid is a bit of a bargain. Um, they are disappointed in the finances involved in the deal to sell one matter. It was a cheap fee, but it was more the the appearing the entirety of his wages. We are not contributing anything, and that was what I was thinking when I made that sale. Um, so once Kingsley Coleman goes through, we'll lose about 25 million pounds from this budget. So we'll still have about 16 with about 140k to play with. In the wages so there is potential for someone else to come in uh, in terms of where i would be looking at though i'm pretty content with everyone maybe a right back who could challenge Juan Basaka for that role but i'm not in any hurry to make that sign and we might as well save that money for the january transfer period if it is needed and this is going to be my first game in fm21 <laughs> so when you first go in you've got a uh, pre-match tactical advice from your staff um automatically make unfit first team players available for the 23s i'll do that absolutely no bother they think thinking i should defend with a bit more width i completely disagree i think obviously they've got the wing backs bomber forward but they're going to be very very narrow um so i would rather they had the uh, areas to exploit on the wings than forcing them through the middle of the park he thinks i should go from a, a tatum team mentality or a positive i'm not going to do that and make two changes to the team they think i should Swap Rodrigo Bentonka and Paul Pogba for Paul Pogba and Rodrigo Bentonka. I'm not going to do that either. The tactic, it's just a custom gauge and press. Uh, short of passing, passing into space with a high attempt or counter and counter press. Uh, force position, uh, force opposition outside, high defensive line, much higher line of engagement. Uh, the typical standard uh, gauge and press that we've all come to know and love over the years on FM since it's been introduced. Reactions from the team in terms of me team selection. They seem pretty happy with the tactics apart from Edinson Cavani, who doesn't like the team and structure and pass it into space. I don't really care, Edinson. You're not starting. New screen all together. As you can see, official team sheets. Uh, this is absolutely fun. I love this. Uh, press official social roundup. Can't wait. A glorious day for football. Fernandez starts. Greenwood isn't ready for a match like this. We will wait and see on that Lucy McHugh. And staff reaction to team news. Important to press Adam Lalana. Uh, I don't think it's that important, to be quite honest with you. As you can see, all the team talk stuff has changed. The user experience has changed and the design. I'm not too sure how how I feel about it right now. Um, let's just get off this tutorial, Football Manager. I'll figure it out. Uh, I think it, it offers... It does look great, but it offers a lot of extra clicks compared to what I'm used to. And there's some changes which I'm not too sure about where the particularly the match conditioning, they've took away the percentages and give us like a graphical uh, representation rather than the numbers. And I guess I'll get used to it. And here we go, our first match of FM21. Uh, and it looks completely different. As you can see, we've got our starting 11 down here. We'll be able to see the average ratings and their match conditioning as represented by the hearts. Um, and then we've got changing our mentality, our instructions and our shouts here. We'll be able to do from there. And here we have our first highlight of the game. Alex Tellers with the throw-in deep in the left-hand side. Benton Kerr to Wamba Saka. Mason Greenwood's in the box. Oh, Matty Ryan with an important save for Brighton. Here we go this time down at the right-hand side. Pogba to Wamba Saka. The ball's played forward. 
It's not your best uh, move there, wan -Bissaka. His passing isn't great, so we can't expect too much from him in the attacking sense. But here he is down uh, the right-hand side. He gets a cross in. It's cleared by Dunk. Out Alex Tellez. He's driving in the box. He's going to go back post. It's blocked by the defender. And there it is, Mason Greenwood again with another chance. And another Paul Pogba. We are absolutely peppering the goal of Brighton, but we cannot find our way through right now. Right. Leeds take the lead against their Wolves. Nice little pop-up there. The corner's played in. Marcus Rashford back to Alex Tellez, and that's the end of that. So the first half's coming to an end, 42 minutes in. We haven't really created all that much, but we have had the majority of the possession and all of the highlights as we get ourselves a penalty. Aaron Wambasaka driving at the box is taken down by Bernardo. I'm not even sure who's checking. What What do you mean you're checking VAR? Penalty awarded. Thank you very much. I, I like that little animation as well. It's a little bit more interesting than watching the referee run at the side of the pitch. Bruno Fernandes then puts the penalty away and we find ourselves 1-0 up 43 minutes in. And there we have it. Half time. Our back room. This is just a mess. Our long range passion is letting us down. But otherwise we are connecting our passes. Yeah, I'm not surprised it's letting us down. We should be... Uh, Shorter passing, as per my instructions. Our XG match history. Uh, I'm guessing this is our XG going right up here. So we should expected 1.35 goals compared to their 0 0.17. So it looks like uh, XG is going to be a pretty prominent part of the data set in terms of FM21. No changes just yet at the half uh, time break. Our players are still, I think, still pretty uh, match fit. You know I had rules in my head, you know I would get players off below 80%, I would, wouldn't start players below 90%, 95% was my absolute limit before I started considering a change. And now with these hearts, it's all sort of changed. Mar uh, Marcus Rashford, he's going to have to come off here, we're going to make ourselves a substitution. So Anthony Martial will move out to that left hand side and we will bring on Edinson Cavani up top for uh, Marcus Rashford. Let's see if he can make the difference and hopefully get us a couple of more goals. I'm not too impressed by the side in this game. We're expected goal of 2.1 right now and we've only scored one. So um, I think we're going to demand a little bit more from the lads and see if that makes any blind bit of difference. Fernandez with a corner. It's played in, cleared to the edge. Mason Greenwood with an absolutely terrible strike. We can't get Kingsley Coleman in fast enough. Alex Tellez switches the player to Mason Greenwood. Bruno Fernandez with a strike. Goes just wide. A little bit of a dull end to the game. But thankfully we do manage to get our three points. Bruno Fernandes from the penalty spot with the goal. And uh, disappointing. Not a great first show and I will say. Obviously getting the wins fine. But I'm not particularly pleased with the performance in the attacking sense. And against Liverpool coming up next away from home. We can't afford to be that sloppy. But we have our table look. We're currently sitting sixth after the first game of Fulham. Win of, what did Fulham win? Did they win 4 0? They did. They beat Southampton 4-0. Crystal Palace beating Sheffield United with Bachawi getting four goals in that one. Tottenham beating Man City. Decent. Decent at the start. Leeds beating Wolves. I, I love this screen as well. And once the full game comes out, I will be applying the dark theme. The purple's nice. I prefer dark. Fernandez picking up a man of the match performance there. Uh, I'll see you superb and goal. Boost his morale just a little bit. Um, but the whole interaction system and everything has changed in terms of how it's visually represented. I don't know how much it's actually changed in terms of the content and the meat and how it affects things yet. But uh, at the very least, it looks a lot better. So in terms of the tactic, I definitely think it'll need tweaking, um, at least in the attacking sense, to see how much we can improve it uh, in the final third. We're expected nearly three goals in that game and we only got one, so that's a little bit of a question mark. Maybe Martial drops out for Edinson Cavani in the next game to see how that improves things. Maybe I do switch Benton Kerr and Pogba over, having him as the playmaker in the centre of the park. And maybe moving uh, Bruno Fernandes to an advanced playmaker rather than attacking midfielder. Might work. We'll have to wait and see. I'll make the changes and we'll see how we get on in the next game against Liverpool. But the next time we see each other, um, I'm not too sure. Maybe the Wolves-Everton game, something like that. A few games in between. Be able to really start to get a feel for the squad and the tactic and how Football Manager 2021 plays, which is the whole point of this series. But a question for you, lads. How are you finding the new game? Are you enjoying the beta? Who are you playing with? How are you getting on? Who's been your favourite signing so far? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed today's video, though, lads, could you please leave a like and get yourself subscribed if you're looking forward to some more FM21 content. But anyway, until next time.
Take it easy.